Hi, so today we're going to be talking about the pelvic floor. Okay, so I have gotten um, okay, my spine, my spine model is still in one of the clinics and I can't get to it at the moment. So um, I'm using a bowl because our pelvis is essentially a bowl. So um, here is the structure of your pelvis. Okay, dish, dish, dish. Right, so at the front, this bit down here, well, let's look at it that way. So this bit up here is your pubic bone, okay? So your pubic bone at the top, at the front, and your coccyx, your tailbone at the back, okay? On the sides, you have the other bony attachments on the pelvis, so your sit bones. Um, feel them in your bum when you're sitting down, okay? And then this cross is the pelvic floor. So the pelvic floor is essentially a cross of muscles. There are about four different muscles that make up the pelvic floor, okay? And in ladies, we have three holes, okay, which um, the pelvic floor houses. Um, so you've got the urethral opening where you pee, the vagina and the anus. And with men, obviously you only have, you have the balls, um, so the, the muscle that lifts your balls is one of the key kind of zones to think about. So often uh, when I'm teaching Pilates to men and they're really struggling to access this area, um, I say, you know, how does it feel when you cough and you know that lifting sensation? Or if you think somebody's about to kick you on the balls, then you have that lifting sensation. So that's what you want and the anus. So this is kind of the area that we're talking about. This is the anatomy, okay? So if you think about that, um, then, um, one of the, one of the ways that we practice, um, finding those muscles. Okay. So I'm sitting on a bolster. You can be on a folded pillow. Um, but what you want to do is just try and access that cross of muscles. Okay. So accessing the cross and get to any point you like on the cross. A lot of people start with the peeing muscles. So they say stop and start the, the flow of we, um, what becomes particularly relevant. And it, it, this is the bit that is particularly for women, um, is after childbirth. Um, so women who have kids after childbirth, um, this becomes a more relevant factor. Um, and, but I don't want to, anybody to think that this is only for childbearing age women. I don't want you to think it's only if you've had children. Um, this is for the young, the old, the male, the female, like even people who are training. So any increased load, even if it's weight training, we t if, if that tissue isn't strong enough to support the load coming back through, then you're going to get weakness. And so a lot of women, even when they're young, they're getting the sensation of leaking when they're training. Okay, so we just want to train these muscles because it does become really important. If you think about this box, this is what we want to access to make to make strong that supports the back okay it can't just have you, you know you can't have a square with only three sides because then you've got a weakness you know you can't put anything in that it's going to go okay so um so the pelvic floor really hold, holds everything up so think of any point in that cross okay and then just try and tighten it up like a flower closing and then lifting it into your body okay and this should be done on the out breath. So we're working a little bit with a diaphragm. So if you think that as we breathe in, the diaphragm does this, and as we breathe out, it does this. So if you breathe in and you're trying to lift the pelvic floor, it has nowhere to go, okay? Because one of the jobs of the diaphragm is to keep that equalized pressure above and below it, okay? So if you have something coming up, you're not gonna be able to it's going to have nowhere to go because the diaphragm is going to be stronger, especially at the, at the start of your training. And the diaphragm is a very strong muscle. Okay, so um, so starting off, thinking about lifting up that pelvic floor as you breathe out. And you want to hold this for a count of 10. Okay, and now you'll feel lots of other things tightening up. So it might be your glute muscles, it might be your inner thighs, it might be your belly, you might breath hold. Try and let everything else go, okay?
So you're holding it for 10 and you're making it as strong as you can. So when you think you've got that contraction as strong as you possibly can, you hold it a little bit stronger. Okay, and even try and bring in other points of the, um, of the cross. Try and see how much you can pull in to that point. And the thing is that when you're, when you're training, when you're doing other activities, you do start to access that with the out breath, but you shouldn't have to think about it all the time. So we do this almost like a specific bit of training uh, that then we don't have to do all the time, okay? And the idea is that you do 10 contractions. So you do 10 times holding it for a count of 10, and then you do with your breathing. So breathe in, relaxing it, Breathe out, lift, and let go. And breathing in, and breathe out, and lift, and breathe in, let go. And you're doing that so for just for 10. So it makes it fairly quick, so you get this kind of rapidity in the firing, and then you can do another five if you want to, just really tight holding, because then once you've done that 10 of really quick ones, then you're stronger through that muscle anyway. You've kind of really fired it up, and so then you want to fire and hold. So you get that initial fire and hold, counting for 10 and let go. And fire and hold and count for 10 and let go. And then you do your 10 and then you can do another five, okay? So practice doing some of that, okay? Think about that structure, okay? That's your structure, so if you're relying on your back, your pubic bone would be on the top, your tailbone at the bottom, your sits bones at the side, and then your pelvic floor coming in across of muscle over that. So also you can think about this line kind of tightening up and pulling between your um, sit bones, but without squeezing your glutes. That's the important bit, okay? And then whatever, wherever you can and want to access and as much as you want to access and you can do different points at different times, okay? So just um, start practicing that. Lying down is easiest first um, and then sitting. Um, sitting is quite useful to have a bolster underneath you like this. There's a little bit of feedback about where you're at and um, and then standing after that and then it's, you know, walking around doing things. So like maybe just lifting your lifting your legs. So can you hold and hold and hold and do one leg lifting? So um, practice doing some of those and we'll start building these um, activations then more and more into things that we're doing over the next week or so. Okay, have a lovely rest of your Sunday. Bye!